Hey guys, what's going on? It's Zoko here, and today I have a guide aimed at addressing some of the issues players make when starting out in ESO. And to be honest, whether you are a new player or a veteran, chances are you have made a few, if not all of these mistakes at some point or another. It is a very valuable list for all, so make sure to watch for the entire duration to get every bit out of this video. If you want more value afterwards and onwards, consider hitting that subscribe button down below. That would be super awesome, and I appreciate all the support I'm receiving from you guys. It's been really amazing. All right, let's get this thing rolling. Course training is overlooked by many players early on in the game. This is a really important quality of life thing to get started with early on, and it alleviates so much down the line as you progress. So for your different horse skills, you have speed, stamina, and carrying capacity. Speed obviously affects how fast your horse goes, while stamina is how long your horse can sprint for. Carrying capacity actually increases your inventory space by one for each training day. My personal opinion, you should train speed early on. Stamina is kind of a non-issue, and you have another option for increasing your inventory size. Training one of these skills isn't much of an issue at all. At the low price of 250 gold a session, it's pretty much always available to everyone. If you can't afford 250 gold, I think you have bigger problems, to be honest. Also, you have a cooldown timer of 20 hours. So pretty much you can train one horse skill once a day per character. Thank God it's not across your entire character family. You would never have multiple characters with a maxed out horse. Each of the three skills that the horse has goes up to 60, so just sticking with the one skill a day metric, that's going to be 180 days to max out your horse, assuming you don't get any riding lessons or stuff from that from crown crates or whatever. Easy math. This kind of transitions me into the next mistake, about not increasing your inventory size. I mentioned not choosing carrying capacity over speed because you had another option for this, and that is buying space from a special vendor called a pack merchant. These vendors are located in some of the more major cities. I will leave a link down below to a resource if you need every location. Now this is a bit more expensive than horse training, so I understand if you want to wait a bit to do this. But once you make that investment, I feel like you will realize the amount you make tends to increase as well because you're just carrying more items to sell. The process begins to snowball. Now you can buy 8 pack upgrades total. Each upgrade increases bag size by 10 slots. The cost of upgrading starts at 400 gold and goes all the way up to 64,500. The total cumulative cost of all upgrades ends up being an intimidating 179,700 gold. Which to someone starting out may seem insane, but to those who have played even a few months won't seem bad at all. And I'm not saying you have to get every single upgrade right away. I'm just saying like get the first few upgrades to get like 20 slots or so. Because that's, I mean, in comparison to the, the horse upgrades, that's like... Well, like 20 days, right? So that's it's just way better to do it this other way I personally hate it when my inventory space is full in any game It makes me feel very limited in my options So this is something I try and remedy early on with any character I'm making Researching traits may not seem very important to new players, but any veteran will mention that it is a very good idea to get started early. A lot of people will sometimes decide to pick up crafting later on in the game, and once they realize the importance that traits play, they just start kicking themselves. Now the reason those players would be upset is because different craftable sets require uh, a different amount of traits researched to craft a particular piece of gear. So for instance, if you have seven traits researched of a medium bracer and you want to make the moon, new moon acolyte set, uh, you're not going to be able to do it because you need nine traits researched, uh, which is all of them. That means you're going to be limited to buying from a trader or finding a guild member that has nine traits researched of pretty much all the pieces of armor that you're going to need to help and make it for you, which honestly doesn't sound like too big of a deal but it's pretty nice being able to make whatever you need on your own but let's say you don't want to be a crafter zoko i don't care about this crafting business you better sell me a much better reason okay 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 let's say you get a nice inferno staff drop of a set piece you wanted but it has the wrong trait if you have the right trait you wanted researched for inferno stats you would be able to transmute the correct trait onto it now that is provided you have the required amount of crystals and access to a transmute station via Clockwork City DLC, or you have one located in a guild hall, but you still need to have the trait researched first 
the times needed to research start off in only a few hours and end up being like a month for the final trait and that's if you have the research passives unlocked at that particular skill tree this is a pretty big one that can actually discourage people in the long run power leveling may seem great to a newer player i get it but it creates a multitude of problems first one being you don't really learn how to use your character that is extremely important when you start trying to tackle harder content with veteran dungeons, trials, arenas. Learning how your character actually works is vital to honestly enjoying this game. And just because you max your character's level out doesn't mean you will already have the skills necessary to become a complete savage. Skills earn XP from fighting just like you do. Thankfully it's earned at the same time, but only the skills on the weapon bar you have active at the time the XP comes in will be effective and even beyond a skills level you need skill points to learn the skills necessary to to morph them into the the next upgrade to get more out of them and while leveling up may have you feeling like you have all the points you need you will realize at some point you should have been doing some other things thankfully there are quite a few ways to earn skill points in eso hunting sky shards are probably the most effective yet boring way of tackling this task story quests group events within a public dungeon uh the quest associated with a group dungeon leveling up your alliance rank in pvp you have options there is no need to rush so if it's your first character just please take your time and enjoy the game buying gear from merchants before you hit the gear cap of cp160 is generally a bad idea leveling in this game is fairly easy i think there is enough variety of content to keep upgrading your gear from any quest you do or gear you just find you can also utilize a guild member to make some gear to help you along they have been a crafter while and you just tell them you are new and you don't really know what you need assuming you honestly don't know what you need they can usually provide what would be best for you because they understand the most useful sets for a new player of both stamina and magicka types they also probably won't charge you so don't worry about asking because you are short on gold just also be upfront that you are short on gold it's more polite that way the eso community from my perspective is extremely helpful and worst case they just say no or don't respond nothing lost there you just don't want to waste that hard-earned gold you accumulate before before you get to the point where you really need to use it for gear and upgrades needed to round out a build. That brings us to the final point of using your upgrade materials too early. This I don't feel like is super common but I think it needs to be mentioned. When I say don't use your upgrade mats too early I am really referring to gold materials. Those are the rare and expensive items to get your gear to that top tier. And you really don't want to mess with upgrading too much before 160 because once you hit that gear cap you will be replacing it all anyway whatever you do before 160 it's just not going to be as good as that top level now whenever you do decide to upgrade to whatever rarity you need to pay attention to how many resins you are actually using you can make an attempt at even one but this is a really bad idea because you will likely break what you're trying to upgrade and if a piece breaks that took a while to get it would be extremely demoralizing using enough resins can actually 100% the upgrade. So don't mess around and leave a chance even if the odds are in your favor. Upgrading a piece of gear to that max tier takes eight gold resins at the cheapest. And that's assuming you have the appropriate passives unlocked to lessen the amount of resins needed to guarantee an upgrade. When you do decide to finally take the plunge and do your upgrades, I would recommend starting with your weapon. This will have the biggest impact on your gameplay and you will really notice a difference. After that, go after your armor pieces, starting with the ones that have the most armor to offer, so you get the most out of each upgrade. Your chest piece, helm, legs, and shoulders are all the biggest pieces of the gear and what you would want to prioritize when you're first upgrading armor. And lastly, wait to upgrade your jewelry. Even to purple, honestly, I think a few of my guys still have blue, and for me, that's totally fine. Waiting until you know you have the gear you are going to be in for a while I think is best. If you know you are sitting in your build's endgame sets or you're just Mr. Moneybags then it's probably fine to upgrade. Now we talked a lot about mistakes made by players and for some of these solutions gold is needed to help along those quality of life changes. I have just the guide for you though. If you are new to the game these methods do a great job of laying out some easy ways of making some cash. So make sure to click that video popping up. Subscribing is also the best way to stay up to date on the guides I make. Thanks for watching. Until next time.